It's April 1940. The tiny destroyer HMS Glowworm has been steaming to meet with the battle crews of Renown when something unexpected happens. Two enemy destroyers are spotted in the rolling seas ahead, and Glowworm engages them, firing with her guns through a dense fog. The German destroyers panic and turn to run, sending off a call for help. Glowworm stays on their tails when something terrifying looms out of the mist. It's a massive German heavy cruiser. Glowworm has been led into the jaws of a much larger foe, and as the warship's big 8-inch guns burst into life, Glowworm's commander has a decision to make. Run or fight. The subsequent action would result in a strange outcome. A British commander awarded the Victoria Cross, largely at the suggestion of his German adversaries. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs, and this is the incredible true story of HMS Glowworm, the plucky little destroyer that took on a cruiser. By April 1940, the early battles of what would become the Second World War had been raging in Europe. Poland had fallen, and the British and Allies braced themselves for assaults on other European nations, but then the Nazi war machine came to an unexpected halt as Hitler planned his next move. As the so-called phony war went on for months, Allied forces had started out in a state of extreme readiness, but now found themselves lulled into a sense of monotonous boredom as they manned fortifications across the French and German border. Unbeknownst to them, the German leader had his sights set on a different target, Norway and Denmark. Their fall would mean the tight British grip on German sea lanes would be loosened. German ships could more easily slip from home ports and out to freely hunt in the North Atlantic. The German army began to prepare an invasion for early April 1940. The plan was quite unique because it called for German troops to land by sea, not in slow merchant ships, but from much faster warships like cruisers and destroyers. The British Royal Navy was a formidable force that stood ready to engage any German warships they could find, since the year prior it had instituted a tight blockade on the North Sea to prevent any German attempts at a breakout. Now, with the German army strangely quiet, British planners began to sense that something was brewing. Warships patrolled the North Sea and the waters off Norway with a keen eye, and one of those warships was the mighty battlecruiser, Renown. Renown was a First World War era warship that could be a formidable adversary against much of Germany's surface fleet. Norway was an obvious target of German interest, and if it was to fall, then it would make Britain's defence from the ocean much more difficult. Mines were laid at sea, ostensibly to hamper Swedish ships carrying supplies for the German war effort, but with a secret ulterior motive. It was likely to prompt a German retaliation, which would then give the British cause to occupy Norway themselves before the Germans could. Renown covered the mine laying operation, and she was escorted in turn by four destroyers, and one of them was HMS Glowworm. Glowworm was a small G class destroyer built in the mid 1930s, equipped with powerful engines that could drive her at up to 36 knots through the waves, as well as a fairly standard main gun battery of four 4.7 inch or 120mm guns. The G-Class were a workhorse type of destroyer, an improvement on previous classes because more compact machinery meant they could be built slightly smaller. Glowworm was under the command of Lieutenant Commander Gerard Roop. He joined the Royal Navy in the interwar years, but had first served at age 15 as a midshipman on battleships, before moving on to cruisers and then finally destroyers. Remarkably, when he took command of Glowworm in 1938, he was only 33 years old. He was well liked by his crew, who gave him the nickname Old Ardover for his habit of suddenly ordering course changes at the last moment. Two years later, Glowworm was part of the screen for Renown, as she guarded the mine laying operation off Norway, but conditions were far from ideal. The seas were huge, and threw the destroyer around like a toy. Then there came the cry all sailors dread, man overboard. One of Glowworm's crew had been swept into the ocean. Roop signalled Renown for permission to attempt a search, and when he was given the okay, he had ordered Glowworm to turn around and his men to keep a keen eye out for the missing sailor. It was a bit like finding a needle in a haystack, but touching that Roop would even try to find him, and they spent the entire day of the 6th of April searching, but sadly it was hopeless and the man was lost. 
Glowworm would need to rejoin the main force, so she steamed back for renown. On the morning of the 8th, the seas were still huge and a dense fog hugged the ocean like a blanket, when suddenly lookouts aboard Glowworm spotted something they hadn't expected. Two German destroyers suddenly popped into view, the Z-11 Bount von Arnim and the Z-18 Hans Ludemann. The chance encounter was a surprise to both sides and Glowworm was now in a sticky spot. The two German destroyers outgunned her each, they both fielded five five-inch guns and were capable of the same high speeds. Between them, they would be able to pick apart Glowworm and she wouldn't be able to escape. Recognising the seriousness of his situation, Roop knew he had no choice but to engage. His men swung her guns around and began to fire. Remarkably, Glowworm scored a hit almost immediately, and then the Germans did something unexpected. Instead of firing back, they hurriedly turned north to run away. Roop was no fool, he knew that something was up. They were probably trying to lure him towards a more substantial force to guarantee his ship's destruction, but Roop also knew that the location of these two dangerous warships needed to be monitored and relayed to the British home fleet. He decided to pursue them at least for a time to keep their position known. Glowworm cut through the heavy seas as she chased the German destroyers north, but then out of the fog there came an unexpected sight. It was a large warship and Roop and his men didn't recognise the silhouette. They initially figured it to be a friendly, maybe a cruiser patrolling the stretch of ocean for German warships. Glowworm held her fire as the friendly cruiser drew nearer, but soon they must have realised their mistake, because it was no friendly at all. The destroyers Z-11 and Z-18 had been on an interesting mission. As Roop had correctly surmised, they weren't alone. They were escorting a much larger, more fearsome warship. Glowworm and her crew couldn't have known that April 8th was actually the eve of the German invasion of Norway. Remember when I said the plan called for the German troops to be landed by fast, heavily armoured warships and not slower, unprotected merchant ships? Well, Z-11 and Z-18 were both heavily laden with German soldiers, but they were also escorting another warship, heavily loaded down with troops and supplies, heading for Norway for the start of the operation. That ship's name was Admiral Hipper, the class leader of a group of five heavy cruisers. Roop must have stared wide-eyed through his binoculars at the sudden sight. Hipper was ten times larger than Glowworm, the German warship boasted eight terrifying 8-inch guns which could rip into the British destroyer as if she was made of tissue paper, and even worse, Hipper's 80mm or 3-inch thick belt armour meant that at this range, Glowworm's small guns would simply bounce their shells harmlessly off the hull. Glowworm had originally thought this newcomer was a friendly warship, but then the big gun turrets had trained on the little destroyer and they burst into life with thick clouds of black smoke. Rook knew that this fight was virtually unwinnable. His ship's guns would be almost useless against a big foe like this. He was separated from the support of Renown, who was still miles away. Glowworm was all alone. Their only hope was their torpedoes. The destroyer mounted two quintuple launchers. A successful spread fired at Hipper could knock her out and cause severe damage. Rook decided to set a smoke screen and cover his ship. In the best case scenario, it would mean he would make a clean getaway or at the very least provide some cover as he attempted a torpedo run. With shells falling around her, sending columns of water up that towered over a bridge, Glowworm made smoke and turned into it, but the shells kept coming. Admiral Hipper's radar could see right through the smoke. It meant that her guns could be trained and fired with accuracy on the British destroyer with no problems. Glowworm shuddered. She was hit again and again, the 8 inch shells passing straight through her unarmoured shell plating like it was cardboard. The hits were devastating, the wireless radio office, the bridge and the forward gun turret were all hit and knocked out. The ship's foremast came crashing down with a clatter that rained debris onto the deck. And glowworm's sirens blared bloody murder, their deafening sound attributed to a short circuit caused by a hit. Roop knew he only had one chance to act. Making full steam, the little British destroyer turned broadside to Hipper and fired a spread of her torpedoes. They whooshed out the ship's side and sped towards their target, but the German captain had anticipated this very move. He'd kept his ship pointed bow on to the destroyer. It meant that he could only fire with his forward-facing guns, but it also meant he presented a relatively small target. 
the torpedoes rushed by harmlessly. Glowworm had played her ace card and sadly missed. Now she was at the mercy of the German guns. With no way to run and nowhere to hide, Glowworm suffered under the withering German fire. Shell after shell rained down and hit home, and Roop ordered his ship back into the smoke screen she'd just laid to at least obscure her for vision. The range between the two ships had now closed to just 870 yards, or less than a kilometre. Absolutely remarkable distances that are well, well beyond point blank range for warships like this. Glowworm was now burning and sending up thick black smoke while Hipper's 105mm secondary guns were peppering her with fire from stem to stern. At that kind of distance, the German ship's main guns would be basically useless. The big 8 inch shells were likely roaring over the heads of Glowworm's crew. With this ship trapped and burning, Roop watched as the German warship followed her through the smoke. What happened next is the source of some conjecture. The two ships were now almost right on top of each other. Some historians believe Glowworm had suffered a hit to her steering which caused her to careen out of control, and others maintain Roop had ordered a change of course. Either way, Glowworm did something the Germans had not expected. She turned nimbly around and bore straight down on the Admiral Hipper. She was going to ram them. The Germans threw their helm hard over in a panic, but the heavy cruiser was nowhere near as nimble as the little destroyer. Glowworm hit Hipper's bow neatly just behind the ship's anchors at the forepink with an impact so severe that it threw a German sailor overboard. With Hipper still moving ahead, Glowworm was dragged along the German ship's hull, gouging holes in the shell plating and smashing torpedo mounts from the decks. A full 40 meter, 130 foot section of Hipper's armoured belt was ripped clean from her side. And when the two were finally separated, Glowworm's bow had been completely torn off and she'd been stopped in her tracks while the German ship had her hull open to the ocean with small, neat holes. She took on about 500 tonnes of water, but her compartmentalization and torpedo protection meant she wasn't at risk of sinking. Glowworm, meanwhile, was in a far worse state. She was taking on a huge amount of water, but in a final act of defiance, one of her guns fired one last shot at the German ship. It was a valiant effort, but then the end came. Roop ordered his ship abandoned, and the men who could still stand quickly slipped on life jackets and jumped over the side. What exactly happened to Glowworm then is unclear. Some historians state that her boilers exploded as they were met with cold seawater, but survivors gave a different account, that Roop had let steam out to prevent such an explosion and that the ship had simply rolled over and sank. Either way, those that could abandon their ship did, and the mighty little Glowworm sank beneath the waves. Since first sighting the destroyers, to finally sinking at the hands of Admiral Hipper, only three hours had elapsed. The surprised Germans quickly got the flooding under control, and then did something unexpected themselves. Even though they were now in an active combat zone with their cover blown, and heavier British forces likely en route, Hipper's commander, Helmut Heyer, stopped his ship downwind to rescue their missing man, as well as glowworm survivors. He'd stopped downwind because he knew that the men would be blown towards the larger ship. The German crewman was never found, but 40 of Glowworm's men were pulled from the sea. It had been a remarkably fierce and sudden engagement, and the German Captain Heyer had been impressed by the British warship's stubborn resistance. But tragically, 109 of Glowworm's men didn't make it to safety, and her commander, Gerard Roop, had survived the sinking, and even made it to a rope hanging over Hipper's side, but exhausted from the effort, he had slipped into the waves and was never seen again. Subsequent interviews cast a cloud of doubt over Glowworm's final moments. The only surviving officer, Lieutenant Archibald Ramsey, maintained that Glowworm's steering was damaged and that the helm wasn't manned at the time of the collision. That would make some sense since the bridge had been hit, but Glowworm, as with all warships like her, was equipped with an emergency steering position just above the rudder. Others had heard Roop tell the men to stand by to ram, indicating that the action had been deliberate. But while historians continued to debate over the events of the ramming, what was not in question was the braveness of Glowworm's men and her commander. They had been in trouble from the start, ever since they had stumbled into the two more heavily armed German destroyers, but despite this they had fought on calmly and effectively, managing to hit one destroyer and damage the much larger Admiral Hipper. It wasn't just from the ramming either, Glowworm had actually landed a shell on Hipper and caused some splinter damage. 
Aboard the Admiral Hipper, the Germans mounted a plaque which commemorated the loss of their single man, Gunner Josef Ritter, as well as the engagement with the plucky little destroyer, Glowworm. The British Admiralty was made aware of Glowworm's loss, but the specifics of the engagement came from an unlikely source. Admiral Hipper's commander, Helmut Heyer, had sent a message to the British through the Red Cross telling of the engagement and Glowworm's courage under fire. He recommended her commander be awarded the Victoria Cross for valour. The implications of his message were vast. For the Victoria Cross to be awarded, commendation must come from an officer of regimental level and three witnesses for corroboration. But in the action with Admiral Hipper, no officer of that rank had survived. Instead, the commendation came in from the German captain. It posthumously set Glowworm's commander, Rupp, up for the award. It was technically the first Victoria Cross earned from the war, but it was only formally awarded in 1945. It was presented to his wife after the war had ended, and the citation concluded with this summary. The Victoria Cross is bestowed in recognition of the great valour of the commanding officer who, after fighting off a superior force of destroyers, sought out and reported a powerful enemy unit, and then fought his ship to the end against overwhelming odds. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Oceanliner Designs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we get new videos out weekly. If you want to support my work and get really cool perks like behind the scenes and early access, please visit my Patreon in the link in the description below or sign up as a YouTube member. Come and join the crew. And as always, stay safe, stay happy. And I'll see you again next time.